This is Ron Palou with Defran Systems, and I welcome you to AIRS, Managing Staff and Security Schemes. To enter new staff into AIRS, we would start by clicking on Agency up here at the very top. Then from here, that brings us into Agency Setup. And then we can bring our mouse down over the left-hand side toolbar, right-click to Expand All, and navigate down to Staff Information. To start, we would click Add up at the top. And here on the General tab, you can see our bolted fields. So we have last name, first name, worker type. So we want to make sure that we go through, enter all of those fields. Some of the other fields, uh, start date, employment start date. You may choose to enter a employment start date. Uh, also, for anyone doing HIV uh, counseling and testing, all HIV testers must have their four-digit CNT counselor ID. Without that being entered, the worker's name will not appear in the pull-down for counseling and testing. At this point, we can then navigate over to the Access tab. For those users that need a login in order to access the system, we do need to check off this box. The staff person can access the system. And now you'll see both the login name and the password fields have become bolded. So we would go through, enter our login name and our password. You'll notice this little box, force user to change password on next login. By checking off this box, once the user logs in initially with that uh, password that you have provided them with, they will be prompted to create their own password. Next, we move down to our workers access profile. So we can see this first little box, user cannot see the client address information in the information panel. So if that's a restriction that we want on the user, we could check that off. Otherwise, we would enter our agency. And then also whatever site is to be the workers assigned to site. Below a uh, site, you'll see this message. Access for the user can be limited to only clients at this site. Otherwise, the user will have access to all clients regardless of the site. So here, if I check that box off, it will limit access to only clients at this particular site. Second, we have our program. So we can assign a worker to a particular program within our agency. And again, there's this little checkbox, limit access to only clients of selected programs. So if we are looking to limit our workers access to only clients that are assigned to a particular program or enrolled in a program, then we would check that box off. Next, we come down to job title. So here, it's important to make note for our job title, all job titles are also associated with security schemes. So it is the security scheme associated with a job title that determines the user's access within the system. And we'll be going through that a little bit later. But it's important when assigning a job title, also be familiar with the job title's associated security scheme. So here we can enter our job title, enter our supervisor, also a bolded field. The next tab over, access to services and programs. Here we have this message. This staff person can provide services in the following programs. By default, this is checked off all programs. Uh, you can, however, say you have a particular staff person. They're only providing services within uh, one or two particular programs at your agency. You can uh, uncheck this box and then right-click. 
to select programs. And then we can select those programs that we want uh, the staff person to show up uh, as the worker on the service encounter. So this is a nice feature in that it allows you to um, restrict by program which worker's name are appearing, keeping those lists um, short as opposed to having all of your staff uh, showing up in those uh, lists, making them much longer than they may need to be. The last tab being the Remarks tab. It is here within the Remarks tab you can enter free text comments or notes regarding the staff person. It is recommended that should a change be made in any of the other three tabs, General, Access, or Access to Services and Programs, that it is documented here in the Remarks tab. And at this point, we would then click on Save. To look up our job titles, we would go into the System menu uh, up here at the very top and go into System Options and Security Setup. Here within Security Related Tasks, we can see both our job titles and security schemes. We can click Expand All. And here we have Define Security Schemes and then Define Maintain Job Titles. Once we click Define Maintain Job Titles, you can see up here at the top we have our pull down menu that displays for us all the different job titles uh, that exist within AIRS. And when we highlight one, you can see the associated security scheme. So uh, case management technician, that has the security scheme of direct service staff. If we select another, let's say we select data entry, you can see that the job title data entry also has a security scheme data entry. So you can see that relationship between the job title and the security scheme uh, right here at the top uh, using this pull down. Here's another one. Executive director, that has the security scheme of management. If we click edit, we can make a change to the association of the security scheme to the job title. So you can see now we can click on security scheme maybe make a change to the assigned security scheme uh, also make note of these uh, other options uh, is this a supervisory role here this worker can supervise other staff if not this worker cannot supervise other staff a couple uh, other options define the worker's scope of access to clients so we have this user can be assigned specific cases and we also have the user cannot be assigned specific cases. So if this particular worker is going to be working with clients, you want to make sure that the job title is set to this user can be assigned specific cases. Below we have specify whether workers with this job title have access to all cases or only those cases that are assigned to them or their subordinates. So here we can decide to limit access to clients, only clients assigned to the worker, or access to clients is not limited to specifically assigned cases. Again, we also have a uh, comments field for the job title. Once we complete our updates to our job titles, we can then click on Save at the top to save what we've done. And now we can take a look at Define Security Schemes. So if we click Define Security Schemes over here on the left-hand side, that will bring us to uh, this screen with two tabs. We have Security Scheme Maintenance and then also Screen Level Access. 
on the security scheme maintenance tab, we would select the particular security scheme we are looking to uh, modify or update. So here in the pull down menu, we would select that security scheme. I'll select data entry. And once we select a particular security scheme, we see a description in the remarks field. So here it says, this is a security scheme for data entry staff. This security scheme allows view, add, edit, delete access to clients and services. Now here in the remarks, uh, we always recommend, should you make any updates or changes to a particular security scheme, it's a good idea to document that change uh, here in the remarks field. So now we can navigate over to our screen level access and it's here on this tab that defines the user's scope of the, to the various screens within AIRS. So you can see uh, over on the left hand side we have all the screens found within the application and over across the top we have have access, view only, add, edit, and delete. If we click edit, you can see we have a series of blue checks documenting that access uh, is allowed or granted. And then we have also the red X's. So that would show uh, which uh, functions the staff person with this particular security scheme would be unable to complete. To update screen level access, we would simply either click on the little blue check or click on the red X to change the screen level access. So if we scroll down, we can see some of our screens within clients and services. Here we have the housing history screen, a new screen found in version 8.8. Uh, as a reminder, anytime we have new screens or new reports and errors, it is the job of the system administrator to uh, update security schemes, uh, giving staff access to either those new screens or new report functionality. So here we can update that housing history uh, screen from a red X to a blue check. By default, it will automatically display as view only. And then we can decide, you know, do we want users to be able to enter new housing histories? Do we want users to be able to edit existing housing histories? Or do we want to uh, allow users to add, edit, and delete housing histories? By changing the red X's over to a blue check, that will uh, make the update. Uh, it should also be noted if we scroll down towards the bottom, all the reports and errors are also listed here. So here we can determine which reports uh, users with a particular uh, job title security scheme uh, can be run. Once we have made our updates, we can then Click Save at the top. Some reports that might be of interest related to staff and security schemes and job titles uh, can be found here in the reporting module. So if we click on reporting and then expand open the agency section. So here you'll see staff listing, also security rights report. Looking first at the staff listing report, you can see for uh, one of the selection options we have is site, so we could run the report for staff at a particular site. You got a few different um, options down here at the bottom under order by, you could order by last name, site, program. Uh, under report selection, you also have all staff, caseworkers only, current staff only, paid staff only. So if any of those are helpful, you can certainly use those. 
Moving over to the output tab, you see we just have that one reporting output option, which is staff listing. Making sure our output option is on preview, we can then click on proceed. And here we have the staff listing. So you can see we've got the uh, staff member's name. Um, they go down here, down the left-hand side of the page. You then have the job title, uh, the site, primary language, secondary language, uh, start and end date if those have been entered, paid or volunteer, supervisor, and then the program. The other report here being the security rights report, you'll see for this report we have the selection and output tab under selection options. We can run it for a particular security scheme. So if we right click our mouse, up will pop select from list. We can then choose the security scheme that we're looking to run the report on. So I'll choose data entry. Moving over to the output tab, here we can change our output option again from print to preview, click on proceed, and here it shows us our security scheme name over here on the left, then it goes through all the various screens within errors, and it displays for us, you know, does the uh, security scheme have access? You know, is there the ability to add? Is there ability to edit? Is the ability to delete available? So we can go through, review those. Um, you can always run this report, you know, maybe make updates, uh, mark up the report with a highlighter, things that you might want to change when you then uh, go to uh, make those uh, revisions to the various security schemes. Thank you for joining us on this online video tutorial on managing staff and security schemes. Please visit www.airsny.org for other online tutorials, user resources, and the latest updates about AIRS.